Peter the Iberian was the jewel of the Orthodox Christians as well as of the Monophysites. After his blessed repose, with one accord, they both numbered him among their saints. Holy Hire Martyr Kyrian II, Catholicos Patriarch of all Sacartvelo, Georgia. Light of light, the word of the Lord, in a pillar of light came to you, the radiant and brilliant of the Georgian people, and made you worthy to see his glory like Moses, and taught you the law, and commands to shine in the darkness, holy hierarch Peter. It is well known that this icon is kept on Mount Sinai. Here is the copy of it. The greatest saints of the Christendom are portrayed here. The epithet, the radiant stars of the Georgians, adorns the holy Georgians' fathers, Saint Peter the Iberian, Saint Hilarion the Georgian, and Saint Shio of Ruime. They are depicted with Saint Anthony the Great, Saint Sabas, Saint Maximus, Saint Peter, Saint Paul, and the Archangel Michael. A group of scholars are going to set off on a pilgrimage to Mount Sinai. I bless them to bring a photo of the icon to Georgia. Mount Sinai, the Mount of God, compassionate to a contrite heart. The life of Peter the Iberian informs us of the appearance of Georgian ascetics on Mount Sinai as early as the 5th century. In the 9th to 11th centuries, the Georgians held a special place at St. Catherine's Monastery, where they built churches in honor of St. John the Evangelist and great martyr St. George. On Mount Horeb, where the Lord appeared to a St. Elijah the prophet, Holy King David the Restorer built a church in his honor. He also established a big monastic complex of the Holy Mother of God. The Georgians founded a cultural educational center. Ancient Georgian manuscripts are preserved there. On Sinai, Georgian icon painters created masterpieces, among which particular note must be made of the icon with the image of Peter the Iberian. Dr. Anne Abuladze, Director of Photography, Irakli Akhalkatsi, and I set off for Sinai with a group of pilgrims in January 2019. It should be noted that our mission was very important, for this icon was unknown to most scholars, as well as to the public. The triptych and a half have been preserved to the present day. The Georgian fathers of Mount Athos, Saint Ioane, Saint Ektime, and Saint Georgi are represented in the lower part of the central panel of the icon. The epithet, the radiant stars of the Georgians, adorns them. The same epithet adorns Saint Peter, Saint Hilarion, and Saint Shio. Part of the broken wing was taken to Kiev by Russian archimandrite Porfiry Uspensky in the 1840s, but is unfortunately now lost. The drawing of this fragment has survived and we can restore a full picture. The tetratyph from Sinai is a brilliant sample of the iconography of the Paleologian period. The technique of execution is excellent. The artistic manner is virtuoso. The jewel and pride of the Georgians and the intercessor of the whole world. Zakaria Kartveli the Georgian, 5th century.
Peter the Iberian, a brilliant representative of the Parnava's royal house, was the stronghold of monasticism of Syria, Palestine, and Egypt. Written sources of those times referred to him as a surprisingly eminent man all over the world. Peter the Great. He was a philosopher and theologian, a great ascetic, bishop of Maimuma, and a wonder worker. The Lord would appear to him. Christ's disciple Peter and Mark appeared to him as well. According to the academics Shava Nutsubidze and Ernest Honigman, the 5th century greatest Georgian thinker Peter the Iberian is the author of the books of the Areopagite. Twenty-two hypotheses have been proposed, but among them, the Nutsubidze Honigman's theory is the most fundamental, says academic Guram Tevsadze. Ancestors of Peter the Iberian Our great ancestors, Kartlos and Mtschetos, believed in the one true God. In his book, History of Iberia, Prince Temuraz Bagrationi refers to the ancient Georgian manuscript, which Venerable Father Georgi of the Holy Mountain found at the monastery of St. Simeon the Stylite. Many Georgians labored at the St. Simeon's monastery, beginning during the life of the saint. In the manuscript, it is written that our biblical ancestor Kartlos, the great-grandson of Japheth, and his descendants spoke the Iberian or Kartuli the language that is spoken in Georgia nowadays. Peter the Iberian belongs to the Parnavaz royal house, one of the oldest royal dynasties in the world. Noah, Japheth, Gomer, Togarmar, Kartlos, Mtschetos, Uplos, Parnavaz. Parnavaz, together with the Kuji Eristavi, the ruler of Egrisi, united Georgian tribes and founded the powerful kingdom of Kartli, known as Iberia, that comprised eastern and western Georgia. It was a great epoch in the 4th to 3rd centuries BC. According to the ancient Georgian chronicles, the conversion of Kartli from the 5th to 7th centuries and the life of Kartli from the 11th century, Peter's distant ancestors, the kings of the Parnavaz dynasty, ruled Kartli from the Black Sea to Armenia and Albania in present-day Azerbaijan. Now we are at Armaz Tsikhe, the Armazi fortress, the Acropolis of Metzcheta, the ancient capital of Georgia. It was the residence of the kings of Kartli. According to the chronicle, The Life of Kartli, Armaz Tsikhe was built by King Parnavaz in the early 3rd century BC. Archaeological excavations have revealed the colonnaded hall dating from the 1st century AD, a temple, a wine cellar, and baths. However, only a small part of the territory has been excavated. The baths date from the 1st century AD. The bath consists of cold, warm, and hot sections. In the inscription we read that a bath was built for a king, that bath for a queen, and there is a smaller one most likely for soldiers. Parnavaz erected an idol on Mount Kartli at the burial place of our forefathers Kartlos and called it Armazi. He died and was buried before the idol. Armazi is the Chaldean name of Parnavaz. Armazi is the deity of the Chaldeans, the Kalibis, as well as of the Laz, for the Chaldeans were the Laz, notes Dr. Tsira Inskirveli. The original name of the Georgian Kartveli derives from Kalde and Sakartvelo, respectively. According to another source, Kartveli derives from Kartlos. According to the chronicle Life of Kartli, Metzcheta was built by Metzchetos, the son of Kartlos. He built a town at the confluence of the Metkvari and Aragvi rivers and gave it his name, Metzcheta. Archaeological excavations confirm the existence of a settlement in Metzcheta and its environs as early as the 3rd millennium BC. The world's most important trade routes, including the Great Silk Route, ran through here.
Metzcheta is the cradle of Christianity. Metzcheta is a new Jerusalem, for by God's unknowable providence, the greatest of all the sacred relics of the Christendom, the Lord's precious robe, rests beneath Svetitschoveli Cathedral. The cloak of Elijah the prophet is buried in Svetitschoveli Cathedral as well. They were brought to Metzcheta by the Jews, driven out of the Holy Land. The wonder-working robe of the Most Holy Mother of God is presently kept in the Zugdidi Museum. According to the ancient chronicle, Conversion of Kartli, Holy King Mirian, the first Christian king of the Parnava's royal family, was the son of King Levi, the 26th pagan king of Kartli. Queen Nana was the daughter of the Cappadocian Georgian Uli Torres from Pontus, known Saint Polyectos the Confessor. Pontus Cappadocia was inseparable from the Colchian world. According to Georgian and foreign written sources, while King Mirian was out hunting on Mount Toti, the Lord appeared to him like Moses on Mount Sinai. King Mirian proclaimed Christianity as the state religion in 326 AD. He had two sons, Bakari and Revi. Peter was a contemporary and blood relative of Holy King Vakhtang Gorgasali. Peter was the descendant of Prince Revi, while Vakhtang Gorgasali of Prince Bakari. Peter's parents and ancestors reigned in Southern Kartli. The royal residence is believed to have been in Armazi and Bolnisi. Peter's father, Varas Bakur, was the fourth king after Holy King Mirian. His mother, Queen Bakur Duktia, after the death of her husband, built houses for the poor in villages. Then she left the world and was tonsured as a nun. The birth and youth of Peter the Iberian. Peter the Iberian was born to the right-believing King Varas Bakur and Queen Bakur Duktia in 411 by the Annunciation of an Angel. The king was on his way to the royal city of Metzcheta when the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not be afraid, King Varas Bakur. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife will bear you son. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. The firstborn was baptized in the name of the Most Holy Trinity and was given the name Murvan in honor of his great-grandfather, Holy King Mirian. It is known from his biography that he studied the Holy Scriptures for nine years from the age of three to twelve. At the age of twelve, he was sent as a hostage to the court of Theodosius II in Constantinople, where he was taught Greek. Then he journeyed to Palestine, and there he learned the Assyrian language. Liturgical books had already been translated into the Georgian by that time. St. Polyeftos the Confessor notes that the divine liturgy in Kartli had been conducted in Georgian since the 4th century. The construction inscription of Bolnisi Sioni confirms it. After deciphering the inscription, Professor Ramaz Pataridze claimed that the construction of Bolnisi Sioni Cathedral began in 342 and ended in 357. The First Miracle of Prince Murvan at the Byzantine Emperor's Court From his very youth, Murvan aspired to aesthetic life. Under his royal attire, he wore a rough hair shirt. As his hagiographer relates, Murvan multiplied his virtues through constant prayers, fasting, vigil, love, kindness, patience, humility, and giving alms to the poor. The feast of the baptism of Jesus arrived. Murvan asked his servant for oil to light icon lamps. All rejoiced, but we adhere to a strict ascetic life, said the servant and did not bring him any oil. 
Murvan filled the lamps with water instead of oil and began to pray fervently. In a flash, the lamps were lit and stayed brightly alight on the water for seven days. O oh, miracle, who has ever seen oil lamps burning on the water for many days? The Lord appears to Prince Murvan. Once, while Murvan was praying, the Lord appeared to him. After the Lord's miraculous appearance, Murvan and his tutor Mithridate of Lazeti secretly left Constantinople and set off for Palestine. In darkness, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of light to give them light. In one town, they were taken captive. That night, there was a violent earthquake. The head of the town had a vision. If he did not release the prisoners, the whole town would be wiped out from the face of the earth. Murvan and Mitridate venerated the holy places. On Mount Nebo, a certain holy monk dwelt in a cave for 40 years, leading the strictest ascetic life in seclusion. The hermit welcomed Murvan with marvelous words. Fire of love that the Lord has granted you, not even one of this generation is accounted worthy to have. Do not put it out. Keep it safe. They were tonsured as monks in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre of the Savior. Murvan was given the name Peter, while Mithridate the name John. At that time, Peter was 20 years old. Peter the Iberian, founder of Georgian monastic life in the Holy Land. In Palestine, the roots of Georgian monastic life take us back to the middle of the 5th century, and it is related to Peter the Iberian. The Holy Cross Monastery near Jerusalem is founded by Peter the Iberian. So says Holy Hierom Martyr Grigo Peradze. The Georgian Holy Cross Monastery in Jerusalem. May God bless you. May God grant you and the Georgian nation peace and great mercy. Today is an unusually happy day. Catholicos, Patriarch of all Georgia, have not celebrated the divine services for many centuries in this holy temple. Our ancestors founded this monastery. In the Holy Land, the Georgians were in possession of up to 40 churches and monasteries. The Holy Cross Monastery is the oldest and one of the most important religious and cultural educational centers that have ever been founded by Georgians. According to tradition, at this spot, Abraham's nephew Lot planted three trees, a cypress, a pine, and a cedar. Eventually, they miraculously grew into one large tree. When the Temple of Solomon was being built, it was cut down but left unused. It is said that the cross on which Christ our Savior was crucified was made of the wood of that tree. There is a cave of the biblical lot in the yard of the monastery. The establishment of the monastery is related to Peter the Iberian. First, Peter built a guest house for pilgrims, and then, as his hagiographer relates, he started building a new church outside the city. This must have been the Holy Cross Monastery. Later, Peter built a church in honor of the Mother of God. The main church of the Holy Cross Monastery is dedicated to her. Perhaps, that is the reason why the fresco of the Holy Virgin with the Christ child is depicted above the main entrance of the church. In 1858, the nun Nisime Tsitsishvili brought a manuscript from Jerusalem's Holy Cross Monastery to Sam Tavro nunnery in Metzcheta. In the manuscript, it is written that St. Peter is portrayed on the western wall while a blindfolded monk opposite him. The blindfolded monk is assumed to be John. When John fell deeply ill and was losing his eyesight, his healing occurred at the Holy Sepulchre of the Savior. As soon as the hand of man came out of the holy tomb and touched his face, John was healed at once. Monastery of St. John the Evangelist 
Rene Janin is of the opinion that the oldest Georgian monastery of St. John the Evangelist, near the Church of the Holy Sepulchre of the Savior, was established by Peter the Iberian. It is now known as the Franciscan Monastery, San Salvatore. It is noteworthy that the Georgians officiated their liturgies in their native language in Palestine, in the Lavras of St. Saba and St. Theodosius which is confirmed by the will of St. Saba, as well as by the biography of the 6th century St. Theodosius. Notes Professor Tamilam Galublishvili. <laughs> Professor Michael Tarchnishvili dates the Theibadi Basilica from the 5th century and claims that it was built by Peter the Iberian. Christ's disciple Mark appears to Peter in Egypt. While laboring in the wilderness of Egypt, Peter and John had a vision. Mark the Evangelist consecrated the church that Peter and John themselves had constructed. The Lord performed many miracles through the blessed Peter in Alexandria and all over Egypt. With glorious hymns we praise and venerably glorify our holy hierarch Peter, the radiant star of the whole world and the pride of the Georgian people, especially of the city of Mayuama, the whole Palestine, Alexandria and Egypt, the Skittis and the Thebaid, where he labored and performed God-pleasing deeds. His wonderful works and miraculous healings were heard through all the earth. And now he entreats the Most Holy Trinity to make us worthy of his glory. Monastery of the Iberians Having returned to Jerusalem from Egypt, Peter built one more guest house, and then he founded a monastery of the Iberians on Mount Zion near David's tower. It is one more confirmation that Peter had great authority, for he was allowed to establish a monastery in such an important place. The most ancient Georgian inscriptions from Palestine. The Laz Monastery and the ancient Georgian inscriptions at Bir el Khat. In 1953, an Italian archaeologist, Virgilio Corbo, excavated a Georgian monastery with the 5th century mosaic inscriptions at Bir el Khat near Bethlehem. Peter's name, Murvan, in the world and his father and grandfather's names are mentioned in the inscriptions. Professor Ramaz Pararidze dates the second and third inscriptions from the years 402 to 410. Scholars believe that Peter restored the monastery of St. Theodore of Tiro at Bir el Khat, known as the Laz Monastery, which had been founded by Peter's grandfather, King Bakur the Great. Virgilio Corbo revealed a wine press in the monastery. The Georgians have been using Kvevri, a wine jar, throughout the millennia. Kvevri that is in the museum is not classic, but this is a classic Kvevri. The oldest kvevri in the world is before you. It has been discovered on Hramis Didi Gora, near Tbilisi. This kvevri is 8,000 years old. Older kvevri than this has not been discovered yet. The most ancient Georgian graffiti of Nazareth. In the 1960s, an Italian archaeologist, Bellarmino Bagatti, participated in the excavations of the Annunciation Church of Nazareth. The mosaic floor dates from 427. The initial chapel discovered under the floor presumably dates from between 330 and 337. In the foundations of the initial chapel were revealed Georgian graffiti inscribed in the Georgian script Asum Tavruli. Bagatti concluded that these surviving examples of the Georgian graffiti were the earliest discovered in the Holy Land. Only one inscription of the Nazareth Georgian graffiti has been preserved rather well. 
The inscription has been deciphered by academic Zaza Alexidze. Jesus Christ, have mercy on Georgi. An unknown Georgian monastery in Um Leisun and the ancient Georgian inscription. In 2002, Dr. John Selgman excavated a monastery at Um Leisun near Jerusalem in which a crypt was revealed. On the tombstone was inscribed a five-lined inscription in Georgian Asom Tavruli script. This is the grave of Ioane, Bishop of Purtavi, Kartveli, a Georgian. The inscription dates from the 5th century. Ioane was from Purtavi, while Purtavi was in Kvemo Kartli. The foundation of the Georgian monasteries at Um Leisum near Jerusalem, at Bir El Kat near Bethlehem, and the Holy Cross Monastery in Jerusalem, which was a big monastic cultural center, is related to Peter the Iberian. Georgian and foreign scholars have been working on the project in the footsteps of Peter the Iberian. The aim of the project is to determine the whereabouts of churches and monasteries founded by St. Peter in the Holy Land, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt. With hospitality, Peter was compared with Abraham. Peter and John often set ten tables, especially on feasts, and served all. One supplies ran out. While they were praying, jars were filled with wheat, oil, bread, and wine. They praised the Lord and generously distributed alms to the poor and needy. The Blessed John saw a vision for three days. A cross appeared in the clouds. The Lord was seated on the throne. All the angels, archangels, seraphim, and cherubim were standing around the throne. Elders were seated on the thrones. The blessed Peter and John were sitting before the altar, and a multitude of monks were around them. John saw how the angels were throwing some into the lake of fire. Some were gaining imperishable crowns. John beheld the Most Holy Mother of God standing before her Son and praying for the entire world. The vision was so dreadful that it was quite unspeakable. John peacefully reposed on the 4th of October. He was buried at the Georgian Monastery. His commemoration day was approaching. Peter willed to buy a lot of fish in honor of this occasion, but the weather changed for the worse and the catch of fish ceased in the sea nearby. Soon shortage turned to plenty. That night the heavens poured down rain and the rivers overflowed. The next day the banks abounded in fish. The local people had never heard of such a miracle, like the miracle that occurred by the Sea of Tiberias when, by the will of Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, disciples threw a net into the sea and were unable to haul it because of the large number of fish. Peter the Iberian was highly respected at the imperial court of Byzantium, as well as in the whole empire. Saint Juvenal sought many times to ordain him as a priest, and finally Peter was forcibly ordained by Patriarch Juvenal's nephew, Bishop Paul. Both the Diophysites and the Monophysites intended to ordain Peter. His consecration as bishop also occurred against his will. He was found in the wilderness, was seized and brought before Theodosius. Peter called himself a heretic or a Chalcedonian. After his consecration by force, Peter avoided officiating the liturgy. Yet, when Peter heard a voice of God saying, Offer the bloodless sacrifice, he was grasped with fear and started celebrating the liturgy. When Peter cut the real flesh of Christ, the holy blood poured forth abundantly. By God's will, Peter performed this miracle to show the truth of the Orthodox faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified for us in the flesh and rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. The Georgian translation of the Assyrian text has been given to us by Professor Mariam Chachibaya. When in Palestine a controversy arose among monks whether our Lord's flesh is consubstantial with ours, the renowned Peter condemned to anathema those who did not confess it. 
Then the arguing parties addressed their father Isaiah, from whom they heard the same judgment. Christ as God is consubstantial with the Father, while as a human being is consubstantial with us. Saint Juvenal deposed all the bishops appointed by the Monophysite Patriarch Theodosius, except Peter. Saint Peter's contemporary saints, Saint Juvenal, Patriarch of Jerusalem, Saint Anastius, Patriarch of Constantinople, who had presided the Fourth Ecumenical Council held against the Monophysite heresy, and Saint Queen Pulcheria, were well aware of Peter's pious life and his immutable fidelity to the faith of the Savior. The holy and divinely robed Our Father Peter departed peacefully to the Lord on the 2nd December, 491, at the age of 80 on the coastal suburb of Jamnia. The incorporeal powers with the armies of saints led by Saint Hieromartyr Archbishop Peter of Alexandria presented Peter's soul to God with glory and honor. As light of the sun surpasses the splendor of stars, so an ineffable sweet-smelling fragrance issuing forth from his holy body surpassed all fragrances of the earth. Saint Peter's holy relics healed many sick. He was buried next to John, most likely, at the Georgian Holy Cross Monastery. I hold the viewpoint of Holy Hieromartyr Kyrion II, Catholicos Patriarch of all Georgia, that both the Diophysite Church and the Monophysite Church numbered Peter the Iberian among their saints. It should be taken into consideration that we hold the same viewpoint concerning Saint Isaac the Assyrian. He is a saint of the Nestorians too. As regards Peter the Iberian, many hymnographic works and paintings were created to praise and glorify him as a saint. The earliest manuscript that has preserved the life of the Blessed Peter is a collection compiled at the Petrizoni Monastery in Bulgaria. Professor Ramaz Pataridze dates the manuscript from the years 1300 to 1340. The earliest commemoration of St. Peter the Iberian is written on the margin of the copy of the 11th century Synaxarion by Venerable Georgi of the Holy Mountain on the 2nd of December. On the same day is the commemoration of our holy and blessed father, Peter Kartveli, who was the son of the King of Kartli. In the 16th century Georgian church calendar, St. Peter is commemorated on the 2nd of December. Repose of Peter Kartveli, who was the son of King Varaz Bakur. In the 18th century, the revival and restoration of the David Gareji wilderness is associated with Saint Onopre of Gareji. With his effort, Gareji transformed into a spiritual and cultural center throughout Georgia. The life and activities of Saint Peter, as well as his miniatures and numerous hymns, have been passed down to us in the old manuscripts, which were compiled and copied at the David Gareji Lavra. These manuscripts were created under Saint Onopre's guidance, by his own initiative, with his support and assistance. Venerable Onopre of Gareji the Wonder Worker was rightly called the second builder of the David Gareji wilderness. In the monastery of St. John the Baptist in the Garaji wilderness, at the request of Catholicos Domenti Bagrationi, the famous calligrapher Elder Gabriel Saginashvili compiled a collection that has preserved the life of St. Peter the Iberian. The 18th century major church figure, Catholicos Basarian Baratashvili Orbelishvili, was associated with the Garaji literary school. At his request, in the monastery of St. John the Baptist, a collection called Lives of the Georgian Saints was compiled. In this miniature, Peter is depicted in full stature. In the second miniature, Christ can be seen from within the clouds blessing Bishop Peter, who is pouring water into an oil lamp. The miniature is gravely damaged. It is of note that Peter the Iberian, in this miniature, is painted with Habakkuk the prophet. Alexi Meskishvili, who was associated with Svetitskoveli Cathedral, compiled a collection in which St. Peter is represented with St. Hilarion Kartveli and Holy Royal Martyrs King Archil and King Lursab.
Professor Ivane Lolashvili notes that Peter the Iberian is all honorable saint in Georgia, and the material attesting this is broadly given in the old Georgian manuscripts. Monasteries founded by St. Peter the Iberian were full of Georgian monks. They returned to their motherland to strengthen the people in the Christian faith and disseminate ecclesiastical literature throughout Kartli. St. Peter dedicated much of his time to literary pursuits. At his instruction, a great number of theological works were copied and translated into the Georgian language. Such noble activities of the Georgian monks in Palestine, Antioch, on Mount Athos, Mount Sinai, and in other monasteries did not cease until the 18th century. St. Polyectos the Confessor Karbalashvili. Feast of the Iveran Icon of the Mother of God. <laughs> St. Peter's unknown miniature from the Georgian Greek manuscript that has no analogies in the Orthodox world. It is presently kept at the National Library of Russia in St. Petersburg. This book is God's real gift. It is special. This Georgian Greek manuscript was compiled at the Iveran Monastery. This Georgian Greek manuscript was compiled at the Iveran Georgian Monastery on Mount Athos in the 15th century. It is Saint Nino's quite special image. Perhaps it is the earliest image still extant. Saint Nino is the equal to the apostles and enlightener of Kartli. This is the first facsimile edition. It is enlarged twice. It is survived by chance. The manuscript abounds in miniatures. The images of the saints are quite unique. We do not even know all of them. They should be the subject of study by researchers. In the Georgian Greek manuscript, the images of the saints are represented abundantly. St. Peter is among them. His fresco also adorns the Holy Cross Georgian Monastery in Jerusalem, while the icon hangs on the wall of St. Catherine's Monastery on Mount Sinai. The existence of St. Peter's images in the holy places testifies that the Georgians highly revered him. Otherwise, the saint would be depicted neither on Mount Sinai, nor on Mount Athos, nor in Jerusalem. As a vineyard withers without watering and bears no fruit, so the mind of a monk is fruitless without reading books and listening to spiritual teachings. Peter the Iberian. Having denied being the son of the king, you sought to withdraw from vanity of the world. And so you were called a child of God. O oh, Holy Father Peter, the rock and strength of the pious labors and the stronghold of the faithful Georgian people, intercede with Christ God to have mercy on our souls. Spiritual Mission of Peter the Iberian the most important church figure who began Georgian monastic life, not in Georgia, but in the Holy Land, is Peter the Iberian. Saint Peter is the founder of the monastery, which today is known as Jerusalem's Holy Cross Monastery, notes Professor Tamilo Mgalobishvili. Peter the Iberian initiated a spiritual revival of the Georgian nation through the establishment of monastic centers and scriptoria in the Holy Land. Peter the Iberian is the founder of the first Georgian community in the Holy Land. 
As academic Shalva Nutsubidze notes, Peter the Iberian is the founder of the Georgian Philosophical School in Syria, Palestine. St. Peter's works rendered a great influence on the philosophical writings of Ioane Petrizzi, Venerable Ephraim the Lesser, and Shota Rustaveli, the author of the 12th century world masterpiece, The Knight in the Panther Skin. His Holiness Ilya II, Catholicos Patriarch of all Georgia notes, the works of Saint Father Peter the Iberian, the author of the books of the Areopagite, laid the foundations of the medieval theological and philosophical thought and influenced the modern world outlook greatly. Perhaps that is the reason why Peter the Iberian is the radiant star not only of the Georgians, but also of the whole world. But you, my beloved, Remember my love to all of you, and do not forget me. Peter the Iberian. <laughs>